Now, before we get started, I'm sure you're curious as to what this slide is about. Okay? Uh, um, the, the story within stories within stories. Okay, this, this is a, uh, if you look in the background, there's two tubes there that are for BSC samples. That's not what the story is about. That's the candle. <clears throat> and guys, I want you to learn a lesson from me here, please. That my wife bought and set on my desk in a little study area at, at, at our house. Okay, hold on one second. That notebook right there. <laughs> Adapt and improvise. Get, I wanted to make, be sure that I had this exactly right. That my wife left this candle at my desk. Here's the story. And I look on this candle. I'm like, why is, why is she? I'm supposed to be the other way around, right? Don't you get? So on this candle, there's two things. Under Secretary, that this candle says, it calms the mind to encourage relaxation. And the second thing that it does is, it creates a sense of harmony. <laughs> it's on the bottom of that thing right there. <clears throat> so I get, I get to thinking about that. And listen, Dr. Thomason, I mentioned just a minute ago, we often, we guys, we overthink some stuff a little bit sometimes. Got to thinking about that. And I said to my wife, thank you. Thank you for this. As I read about this candle here, it says that if I create this sense of relaxation, am I going to get a little harmony after a while? <laughs> Y'all with me on that? <laughs> hey, I got a hormone or two still left. She said, no, it was, it was half price at Bath and Body Works, and this room smells like your butt. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> as we go through the rest of the meeting, or maybe the rest of this talk, you be encouraged to feel relaxed and a sense of harmony, because <laughs> that's all you're going to get. <laughs> Now let this, let this story within the story uh, remind us, especially us guys, that uh, we tend to overthink some things sometimes, certainly within some of these uh, activities that, that we've had going on uh, with, with uh, animal disease traceability. This is a, some cattle in, in Alabama maybe a month or so ago. Sorry to some of our partners and friends. We're already greening up a little bit. I got another picture of that here in just a second, but I don't know if you can see it, but there is a brand on this cow. Uh, and these are the kind of cattle that we're looking at, not only in Arkansas, but in Alabama, southeast, that need traceability, that need traceability. We understand that. Producers probably somewhat think about that occasionally. That's about as diplomatic as I can be. But I'm going to look at this old gal right here, boys. She will get in your shirt pocket. Are you with me on that? She's looking for the opportunity to uh, put a tag on you. You with me? So this is what, what, what we know. is This is a this is state perspective. Okay? And uh, we, we, know th we know these things are going on as we go forward. This is reality. So uh, we... W Back at, at the USAHA meeting, we were asked to, uh, from the National Assembly Executive Committee, Executive Council, to put together a working group with two um, ideas to go forward with, and that was around the transition to EID technology and then the potential call share project. These are the, if I, if I miss somebody's name that was on the state or the National Assembly, please, please forgive me, but your name should be on here. Some of, some of these in this area I cannot pronounce from the south. <laughs> so uh, we do appreciate the hard work, but, and, but the opportunity, and I didn't mention uh, Dr. Tomlinson and, and Dr. Aaron Scott has already been mentioned, their team. We, uh, we set about a conference call, listen, every Monday, every Monday since USAHA we've been having a conference call, except for maybe we took off 
Christmas, week of Christmas or so. But the dedication to not only our veterinary services team and partners, but to our state partners uh, uh, can't, can't be uh, 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 recognized enough. There was difference of opinions. There's differences among states. There's differences among the country. But, uh, for example, my good friend in, in Rhode Island, Dr. Marshall, he has, there's 25 cows in Rhode Island. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and then there's all Buku in, in Texas. Um, cattle in other parts of the, the country as well. So we kind of, this working group on the, certainly on our state, we, we, we had to realize that, you know, we need to not, not just put forward thoughts, comments, agreements, disagreements from our perspective, but also from representing the rest of the country, if you will. And, and, and you know, the, the, to Mr. Undersecretary, there's some things that we... That going through this working group and the, the conference calls that we, we kind of realized that that's a pretty good idea. This just won't work. And that's what we hopefully learned from one of the lessons, uh, I think maybe this, this young lady speaker this morning, you, or, or maybe yesterday, but I can't remember. But I can't remember if I got on my underwear or not either, so... <laughs> Y'all come on now. <laughs> We're going to be here while, yes, if we don't laugh a little bit. It, it is that it, 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 if there's some, uh, uh, some opportunities, I'm not I'm looking for opportunities to be optimistic, but there's going to be some things that just ain't going to work. And so this, that, that, that might, you might think is a failure, but it's really not. Then we learn from that. We go to the next step, right? Y'all with me on that, right? So the two, the two primary objectives that we had were to look for ways to transition from the metal ear tags to electronic tags. And listen, uh, the, your Farm Bureau part, members and partnership here, there was a young man that, is, that has just come to uh, our state. Um, he will be, he's new, he's, he's just a bright young man. He will be over the, and I was telling someone else about that this morning, I think Dr. Shear, but he will be uh, the chairman of our beef commodity group in our, in our state. Uh, he, and, he and Dr. Edmondson, who's here with me in my office, we had a meeting with him a week or so ago. And the young man, bright young man, he had never, he had never touched or put his hand on a metal ear tag. He didn't, exa- he didn't know exactly what they were. Okay? So we, we, we're at, a, we're at, a, we're at a, uh, a, good, a good position, I think, uh, some old things, we, we, we have, a, in Alabama, we have erected, the, in one part of the state, there's a monument to this thing called the boll weevil. Okay? Y'all ever heard of that? And the cotton, and the peanut, you know, so they, the, the, they erected a, a, a monument in Enterprise, Alabama, to a bug. <laughs> it's the boll weevil. Had it not been for the boll weevil, we would not have moved from cotton to peanuts. Okay? Well, we've erected a monument to the metal ear tag in Alabama. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing about that? That's true. This <laughs> is the boat anchors. <laughs> so we want to we want to move past that. By the way, I'm gonna get through my 300 slides, whether y'all like it or not. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So the, the, this is a brochure that we put out several years ago, and y'all did this in your states, I'm sure, well, you state animal health officials. We put out this brochure, had all our names and stuff is a folded thing, and we gave it away at, at uh, stockyards, Chelsea, at uh, uh, Tupperware parties, and at Sunday school class, everywhere we could find anybody that uh, could fog up a mirror, well, we gave them one of these brochures. And, and we listed the three kind of ID and there's the metal ear tag and and the uh, 840 tags down here who to call and what to do and you could fill out this on the back side of this to get your prim ID number we were really forward thinking we thought and so we've had to change this now because we're going to take this picture off of, of our little uh, um, brochure but we the, just as just a visual we want to move from from the uh, the uh, highly successful down through the years 40 year, 50 years use of this tag over to uh, an electronic system. Now, let me tell you, when I started with the state as a VMO, we had brucellosis in Alabama. Yes, we did. We did the live field strain brucellosis 
in our state, when I started as a VMO, you know, now you think, well, you're an old man and you'd be right, but we had it in our state, and you know what? We traced every one of those cows, and we retested them every 60 to uh, 120 days, depending on if you were fence line contact or not, with a metal ear tag. Yeah, we did. It took hours, and we had a veterinary services uh, uh, epidemiologist, Dr. Don Cheatham. Some of you may, may remember Dr. Cheatham's name. Uh, he single-handedly uh, organized test charts every day off of a metal ear tag, okay? He went home one night and his own dog bit him. They ain't been home, <laughs> just spent all this time chasing them looking for metal ear tags, okay? It can work. It, it can work. It's just not going to work today, right? Okay. So you've already seen the timeline. And again, we had asked this specifically from the working group. We, we went back and forth. Now listen, the, the, this didn't just happen by, like, oh, here's a, here's a couple of thoughts and a couple of ideas. Here, we want this timeline. This took, it, this took Monday after Monday after Monday with a collaboration, working back and forth. Uh, Thatch Winslow. <laughs> This, this, this won't work, Dr. Frazier. This, will, this is what we need to think about. Here's what we need to think about. Dr. Bob Cobb from the Southeast. Uh, th th we, Dr. Rod Hall from Oklahoma. I, I, if I miss somebody, please don't get mad at me. They're coming to me. This took, this took uh, uh, many hours of careful thought to, to, to advance what we know was, we, we all need to do, but at the same time be thoughtful in the process. And you see, you've got to, this is the same, uh, uh, road map that's now in front of you. We asked this for this specifically, and we now have it. So we're grateful of that and grateful for the opportunity to participate. Now let's talk about this call share in just a second. And this, this may, may, may cause you uh, uh, may, maybe a little, I started to say constipation, but I meant consternation, whatever the, whatever the word may be for you. So call, the call share program, that was what we were, that was the two objectives that we were trying to accomplish. And so during this transition period, during the transition period over the next couple of three years that we have been informed that Veterinary Services, USDA, will the, make an effort to get tags into cattle or to the animals that need to be tagged. Do, you, do we need to go over that again? Uh, in the CFR, rodeo stock, show animals, all dairy cattle. Uh, beef cattle 18 months of age and older crossing state lines and in our state that change ownership. Okay, we have that already in Alabama. Okay, so these are the animals that need to be tagged, officially identified, and we have direction and we were to de debate this idea of a cost share project. And listen, listen, if you can come up with another scenario that we haven't looked at, I'll, I'll challenge you that we, we debated that thing so many times, so many different ways. Uh, either co cooperative agreements, a tax credit, uh, uh, you know, kiss some more babies, whatever, whatever we've got to do to get uh, uh, the, the the tags into producers. We've got a, I got a couple of closing thoughts here in just a second. What we want to uh, again add maybe is maybe priorities to getting this done. But generally speaking, this is how we how we fifty thousand foot and all the details. All the details have not been worked out. Dr. Tomlinson and Dr. Scott are going to uh, have their team that'll that'll uh, I think maybe get a little more granular as we go forward. Uh, but listen, we want to get discounted tags, if you will, into cattle that need to be tagged. Now, let me let me pause right here for a second. When on the state side, here's what we face when we ask this question: Well, what cattle need to be tagged? What are the cattle that need to be tagged in your state? Well, pretty frankly, the state veterinarians, all of them. <laughs> we want them all tagged. If you want us to do a, a true, Dr. Shear, disease traceability system, then all the cattle need to be tagged. Okay? So that's optimum. We know that that just can't always happen. So let's, let's just, again, focus for a little bit on those cattle to 9 CFR that, that absolutely need to be tagged. Those are going across state lines. Veterinarians got to write a health certificate for them. Show, rodeo stock, okay? However, there's one, one little, one little uh, caveat to that, if you will. Sometimes, uh, Mr. Undersecretary, in your, your opening comments, uh, I picked up on that. By the way, did y'all notice he didn't use a PowerPoint? 
What the crap? That's good. I, I can't go to the bathroom without a good PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> but, but natural disasters, uh, flooding, drought, and for us in the South, hurricanes, the, the shift in the market, the market, the, the, maybe cattle are, are worth more or less. And so that, that can determine what some of the, how cattle should or could move as opposed to those 25 cows that's just out in the pasture. You, you follow me? So we, if we try to just sit here and define, okay, only the cattle that are going across the state line today that need to be tagged, sure. But we've got to also keep in the back of our, of our mind as, as state animal health officials that that could change uh, uh, within a couple of days, maybe with a hurricane bearing down on Florida that needs to move cattle uh, across the state line into Alabama or to Georgia. Drought from Texas, Oklahoma moved a lot of cattle into Alabama. Okay. Now we, we're going to we're going to assist uh, both the producer. The goal is to assist producers, markets, and accredited vet veterinarians. Uh, we want to. It's already been mentioned by Dr. Shear that USDA is going to do a lot of the he heavy lifting at, at con contracting with the tag manufacturers. They're going to develop that, and we'll also determine the amount that I'm on. I don't, if you don't mind, Dr. Shear, I'm on a kind of redirect just a little bit of your comments. They were all right on target, but to say according to the working group, what, what we've not exactly been spelled out. Now, y'all don't get mad at us. If you do get mad, then this, we'll take it outside, but just hang on just a second. <laughs> we'll settle it like me and Dr. Edmondson, you're on, <laughs> go outside with them. <laughs> she whip your butt. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, is that we're not? It's not completely done yet, Dr. Tomlinson. We're we're. Look, is it going to be thirty cents off of a tag? Well, what we kind of proposed back from the working group that maybe we consider a thirty percent off of a tag, a discount of thirty percent, or maybe it's forty percent, depending on how much money they're going to be able to get and your budget will allow. I'm talking about the undersecretary, right? So we're not exactly sure yet what that discount is going to be, but that's okay. I think it's pointed out one time, hey, a discount is a discount. That's a good government program. Get what we can get in this transition period, okay? Uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, once that is determined, that percentage is worked out, then the states will be receiving a certain number. We'll call them coupons, if you will, if you want to call it credits or whatever the terminology that, again, doesn't really matter is that, is that the states will get a determined amount that's still to be determined yet. Listen, some states are not using metal ear tags at all now. We understand that. Um, they will develop a system. And I asked Dr. Tomlinson and Dr. Aaron, who will determine? And then she said, uh, you remember the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark movie, Tony, at the very end? Y'all remember that movie? Well, he said... We've got top people working on it. And, I, and he said, what, who, what? He said, top people. <laughs> Dr. Thomason assures us that they have top people working on that. <laughs> okay? And they, we're going to develop a unique number code for each state. The state will decide how you distribute those, those coupons to become discounted tags. Uh, so the vision is I'm not going to get too granular right here again, but there will be a unique code. The producer calls your office or accredited veterinarian calls our, my office. Uh, uh, a really sharp young lady is going to answer the phone, and, and, and um, I need to, I'm going to inquire about the, uh, the uh, discounted tags. Okay, what are, you, what, what are you going to be there? Well, we've got a load of steers going to Texas. Well, you know, they really don't require official ID. Oh, but you do need a health certificate. Oh, well, thank you. Move, and we go to the next call. You with me? Follow me? So I've got, I've got two bulls going to Texas for whatever reason. Texas really needs our bulls in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Andy. So the, the veterinarian may call and say, i got two bulls going to Texas. I want to require about this low-cost tag. Yes, here's your code. You, you, you decide which manufacturer, that each manufacturer most likely will have their own manufactured code. So you choose, hey, I want to, I want to, I want to put those ultra high frequency, Dr. Justin Smith. I want to put the ultra high frequency. And then you decide and you can use 
that uh, uh, code, call that uh, manufacturer, and order your tags. And the, the producer is going to then uh, uh, pay for the rest of the tag. Okay? Quiet. Thinking. The candle's burning, y'all. The candle's burning. You, the candle burning in your mind. You relaxed and you feel harmony. Okay. And then, and then there's got to be some sort of reporting system. We understand that. Don't really like it. Again, one of those things we don't really like. We don't. The states don't need another report. Be honest with you. We don't need another report. But we understand that when there's money involved, the taxpayers need to know. And we will be a part of the reporting system. That will feed back. As we we've asked Dr. Scott. And Dr. Thomason developed a simple a a, a, a project a, a simple of a of a system to report back the number of these discounted tags that we use and who they go to, either directly to a producer, potentially to a livestock market, to an accredited veterinarian. And by the way, if you're in the room, you're state animal health official, you're holding your breath, about to pee in your pants. It's okay. If you choose to use all, a certain number of all the coupons and you want to buy those tags and you want to distribute it in your sales, I think that would be allowable or at least negotiable. Okay? So if you want to do all that yourself as a state veterinarian and hand them out and you figure out how you're going to charge more or less for the tag, that, in, that can be up to you. Now, the, there's been a couple of questions about asking. I'm going to just go back over very briefly why we're doing this from a state perspective. Oh, I was supposed to stay, gum it. I was supposed to stay here by the microphone. Microphone. I told a young lady yesterday here in, in Iowa that my son was participating at Auburn University on the soil judging team. And she looked at me and she said, uh, what exactly do they judge the soil for? I said, well, all sorts of things. She said, how does he judge the soil? I said, well, they go and look at different types of soil. They look at what is made up in there. Is it sand? And she said, what, what, what exactly do you mean by soil? I said, well, I mean dirt. And she said, oh, you mean soil. <laughs> anyway, if I, if I miss and spoke a word, I, I apologize for Southern vernacular. This is a veterinarian in Alabama taking a BSE sample. Okay, and right down here we see this lovely uh, helper. These are these are the reasons why, at the state perspective, we we need. I'm just got a couple of these. This is a cow that came. This uh, group of these Brangus heifers came to us from Texas. This cow is so eat up with malignant catarrhal, catarrhal fever she couldn't see. She didn't know where she was at. Malignant catarrhal fever. I know it's no longer a foreign animal disease. Thank you, but th this is why we need traceability. These are two reasons we need traceability. I don't know about foot and mouth disease. I hope we'd never deal with that in my lifetime. And I certainly for you, you, our partners with the USDA. But here's some things that's going on all the time. Okay, trichomoniasis. We want to know about where these bulls come from. They better have official ID in them. That ain't up to y'all. We'll handle that. Won't we, Dr. Edmondson? And here's the other reason. I mean, quite, quite honestly, I, I'm not going to go into this. It's a little bit of our, our Bailey Week. But if these boys want traceability, you bet they'll get it. If their customers won't trace it, they want to know where it comes from, they're going to get it. We might as well be providing it. It ought to come from us, and we ought to be uh, responsible for it. Now, uh, the other thing from a state uh, perspective, and what we're, what we're dealing with, this is what we're dealing with right now from, a, from a, a stockyard in North Alabama, Chelsea. They're doing a great job. They're, they're, they are writing down these metal ear tags. Isn't that nice? Isn't that sweet? And we're taking this, my secretary is taking this, and she's entering this thing, this database that we've got. Okay, oh, that's great. And, and when we get one of these trace performance exercises, she's put that number in there manually, and it's worked so good. And then she goes to, over to Walmart and has some lunch, and she comes back and enters some more. And then we get one like this from another stockyard in Alabama. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. We can pick that out. She'll spend the rest of the afternoon working on that, on this test. That's not a test chart. It's just a recording. It's a, it's a, uh, Dr. Smith. It's a, um, it's a sighting. <laughs> and then we got something like this right here. It's another stockyard. It's another, uh, it's another recording. You know what? 
is absolutely worthless. This document here is absolutely worthless. Yes, they recorded The veterinarian recorded them. He wrote something down. You know what? He can't read that junk. So, and, and uh, you know, we could go down there and tell him, Dr. Custer, that's his name. He's a wonderful veterinarian. We're going to pull your accreditation. We're going we're gonna to suspend your accreditation. You know what he'd say? Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait to tell my wife I don't have to come back up here to this stockyard anymore. Thank you, Dr. Fraser. We can't do that. We can't do that. We want to go in there and we're going to help him understand what his block of the chain is. Y'all right? Here's your block of the chain, Dr. Custer. We want you to read that or we want you to empower your stockyard here to capture that number electronically into a database that... My lovely secretary can now enter into that, and we can trace these animals should we need to, right? Priorities. Very quickly, and I'm coming to a close, Dr. Parfis, and land this plane. Priorities. Here's what real priorities are about. Me and my daughter riding some horses when we can, which is not enough. Establish official timeline. You've already done that. Check it off the line. Thank you so much. We now have an official timeline from the uh, uh, in official capacity. Thank you, uh, Secretary Eyebaugh. There he goes. Give him a hand. Right. Come on. You got a you got a politic when you when you got the chance. I'm just saying. <laughs> I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. <laughs> uh, Katie, thank you. Establish an official time, and it's done. We want to. We do, Dr. Cobb. You're exactly right. Thank you for asking that question. We want to streamline what it means to become an AI and manager. You want to get tags into producers' hands. Let the stockyards be empowered to do it if they want to. Let us veterinarian be an AI and manager if they want to do that. Because if they test cows today, if they test test cows today, and they're not eligible for movement, they're just doing herd work for them. Well, next year when they retest them, they got to have some way to read those tags, All right? We want to empower the accredited veterinarian to be an AI in manager. They can do it. It's, it's easy enough to do. Okay. Uh, we want to finalize that state code. Uh, we want to determine the number of coupons as quickly as we can. And then we've, we've asked, this is through the working group. Up, uh, back up. This is from the working group. We've, fil- we've, we've filtered this up. Uh, we want to ask them to develop a, a, a sandbox. I'll call it a litter box sometimes. But I'm getting across that. Uh, for us states that got to report these numbers and report that, we want to be able to take a, uh, a couple of trial and error uh, systems, feed that into uh, Dr. Dr. Aaron Scott that's, that's getting the report. And I'll tell you who will fix that will be our administrative, administrative staff. They'll tweak that and we'll get that fixed. But we, before we start uh, uh, doing this coupon system, doing this discounted tag, then we're going to have a sandbox uh, system uh, we've, we've requested that, okay? So this is the last slide. This is more cattle in Alabama. This is just a couple of weeks ago, and you can see that we are greening up. Listen, this herd of cows, listen to me now. This herd of cows heard that Dr. Fra- H-E-A-R-D, <laughs> they heard that Dr. Fraser was stopping by with some 840 tags. And they lined up themselves to be tagged. Let, let me be tagged. <laughs> That's what they're there. They come up to receive their new 840 tag. Isn't that amazing? That's what they did, Dr. Short, in Alabama. They lined right up. You believe that? Amen, brother. Come on. <laughs> this, is, this is where we want to get the rubber meets the road. We want to get these kind of cattle that need to be tagged, tagged. And uh, there's production systems that need it. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you're a state animal health official, and you've not visited a couple of stockyards or even maybe been to a place like um, uh, uh, the uh, Mr. Gene Lawless right here in front row. If you've not been to a place uh, like his facility where they've been tagging cows with electronic ID for the last 8, 10 years or, or close or more, and to a facility like that, Listen, I, I understand we've got 25 head of cattle. Dr. Edmondson was at, uh, we were at a meeting the other day, and a young man, he said, I've got 12 cows. I've got 12 cows, and you're telling me I've got to tag those cows. I don't have a head cage. I don't have any equipment, and I, I just might as well sell the cows and get out. And I said, whoa, 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 nope, nope. 
No, we never said you've got to tag those cows. When you move them and you sell them, then those cattle need to be tagged. And here's why. Okay? And that particular young man, uh, Mr. Gene, should not be threatening the way of life that you and decades or generations have enjoyed. We, we have got to move to the next level, and we're going to do that together. I am always looking for an opportunity to be optimistic, and this is one of them. Thank you.